question, to be honest, right? Because you look like, uh, okay, I have a diagram that's drawn for me. How more difficult can it get, right? So the diagram shows a region bounded R, which is a curve and a line, blah, blah, blah. Find the volume of the R is being rotated about x axis. Now, first of all, you must have a visual. Okay, I said that many times, you really should, because more challenging questions like this requires that a lot more than uh, those simple questions. Okay, so first of all, can you visualize it? I have uh, something like a, a, a blob here, and then I'm sure it rotated it around this axis. So first of all, it looks like a ring. Yeah? Not exactly a donut, I've never seen a donut later, but it's like a ring, right? So the moment you can visualize it like a ring, you know that it's a tunnel through thing. Okay, and you, the moment you know that it's a tunnel through thing that you're trying to find, you know that you cannot just integrate and get the answer. All right, you need to find some volume and then carve out the center part that you don't want. That's called tunneling, right? So you need to go and minus away some volume later. So that's the first impression of this question. You go like, okay, I've done that before. All right, I've done like find a whole cylinder and then carve out the drum and then I got something else, right? Like a ring. Okay, fair enough. I've done that before. I think I know how to do. So let's go ahead and try to think about that a little bit further. Okay, so first of all, we know there's a ring. And then now, how do you think the ring looks like? Now, the ring means you must be able to see the whole solid block and then the thing that you are trying to tunnel through, the shape of the tunnel. Agree? You must be able to see because otherwise you don't know what you're trying to do. So, take a look at this and you go like, let me try to draw. Now, you don't have to draw nicely, but at least in your mind, okay? All right, so you see that, okay, um, hey, is it like a, is it like a, a shape like this? There's a name for this, okay? It's called a fast room, if you like. First room, fast room, I don't know how to pronounce it. You see that? Yeah? Is that the whole block that I'm supposed to tunnel? No. Okay? No. Why no? Yep, part of it looks like this because part of it is this blue line here. Okay? But you then realize that, hey, wait a minute. This blue line gives me that shape, but which, which means if you, if you draw on this diagram, it's going to look like this. Something glaring is missing. You agree? Okay, it's not so simple. Definitely not so simple. Something else. How about this? This little part here that's going to go round like this. Okay? So, yep, there must be a shape like this. There must be something to do with the blue line. All right, so let's color the line blue. And uh, let's talk about the curve. This is a parabola curve, which is not hard to understand and imagine, right? It's a C-shaped curve, okay? So you need to then understand that the whole block that you have, the whole piece of solid, before the tunnel comes in, includes this red part here. And this red part is going to act like a cap, if you like. Now, this is the whole solid we're talking about. All right, it is being bounded by the red part of the curve and the blue line, and then rotate, you're going to get this. Minus of, oh, black on black, so smart. Okay, can't see much, right? So I'm going to use any color. All right, here we go. Green. This green part. Ah, sorry. Okay, here we go. Is the tunnel. Is being bounded by the green part of the curve. So you need to subtract the green part of the curve that looks a bit like this. If you try to draw it inside here, it's going to look a bit like this. Sorry, uh, it's going to get a bit messy, but. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. I think get the point, yeah? Now, this visual exercise is usually easy. Okay, and usually takes a few seconds in your mind because it's usually some, something big, carve out something you don't want, that's it, done. This one is a bit harder. And therefore, this exercise for this question turns out to be more important than the rest. Okay, some questions you probably don't even need to draw, right? You go, okay, the cylinder, carve away this, you can think all in your head. All right, this one, unfortunately, if you don't draw it out like that, uh, it becomes very hard for me to explain to you which part is which. So usually I will have to draw, but of course in your working you can save on the drawing a little bit, maybe don't even need to draw until so elaborate. 
Okay, but I do always think that some sense of uh, 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 idea is very, very important. Okay, next. Now that I got my idea, it said that uh, I'm going to find actually three volumes. Total three volumes, the red one, the blue one, minus with the green one. Agree? That's it, done. Now we need to do it. Okay, so then we go to the actual doing, right? So the actual doing says uh, we're going to rotate about x-axis, so it's going to be dx, right? So the integration is not going to be too hard, right? It's going to be pi integrate uh, something to do with dx. So if it's the blue one, that will be the y square. Uh, okay, that's pretty easy. I already got the blue answer there, but I need my limits. And the limits must be the x limits, right? Which means this number, this number, as well as this number. Turns out that two of the numbers are very easy to find. It's called simultaneous equation. No reason you cannot do that, right? Sec two, kick it. Uh, sorry, sec, sec two cannot do. Sec three, a math, right? Uh, simultaneous equation with nonlinear uh, equation. So, so you put it in, you're going to get. Um, okay, let me just do fast, fast one now, because in case some of you uh, try and then get the wrong answer, that'll be very uh, disturbing, actually. All right. So you got this, which is x minus five, so the x squared minus ten x plus twenty five minus x plus three. That's equal to this. So x squared minus eleven x plus twenty eight is equal to this. So uh, x is equal to four and seven. Okay, cool. All right. So we know that this is four. This is seven. This is four. This is seven. This is four. This is seven. You got the blue part. The blue part of the area. Oh, sorry, volume is done. Okay, cool. All right. Now, the more challenging one is actually this point. It looks simple, but I don't know how many of you got the answer three. How many got answer three? Good. How did you do it? How do you get a three? I use GC. That's curious. How your GC helps you with that? I was about to tell you that GC is not very helpful for doing this. I'm um, just curious. Okay, I'll tell you. How about you? How do you do it? Differentiate. Yeah, uh, there are a few ways to do this. Uh, using GC, differentiate. But there's one more which I'll show you. Okay, that one is a hack, which is my favorite. I'll show you the hack, of course. All right, now let's talk about GC. Okay, I, I'm not a big fan of using this for GC. You know why? Because first of all, you can't really key this in your GC. You have to make y the subject yourself, right? And when you make y the subject yourself, you have a plus minus. So it's not that hard. You can do it, right? You say, you, you say, Mr. Nang, I can do it. Uh, I have a minus 5 plus minus square root of uh, this. Agree? So you go to a GC, you k in. But I, I do find myself a little bit handicapped when I use GC for this. So I'm not too sure how it actually does it. Hmm, I think all of you are probably a little bit better in uh, using a GC than me. Let's see. Okay? So you key inside a GC, you see this graph, but you see one half of it. Now, this one half of it concept is important. We'll talk about it later as well, at length. Huh? So, so how one half of it, where's the other half? Now, and then, bear in mind, you're trying to find this point, right? So you say, oh, you know what, Mr. I'm going to draw another half, right? So I'm going to draw the negative uh, version. Oh, sorry, this is called fat finger. All right. Uh, so we have x minus 3, and then I put it in. Now you see the complete C shape, yeah? Awesome. But when you're like that, you go to the second function, it's not an x intercept, we cannot use the Zero. It's not a maximum minimum point. It's not any intersection. Actually, intersection maybe it works. Ah, uh. is it? You use intersection? Oh, it doesn't work. Ah, uh. yeah, because if you zoom in, right, I think there's a gap there. If you if you look more closely, if you zoom in, there's always a gap between the two curves. Okay, I don't know why there. Uh, but basically, this this function, uh, not much you can do. You can't use value because honestly, you also don't know what value is it, right? So how do you get the turning point from here? I'm just curious. Trace. Uh -huh. It's kind of near that. Uh, uh, so you use a bit trace. Uh, is that what you're trying to mean? It's not near 3 on the uh -huh. scale. Then I just use value. Oh, oh, so it's. Uh, okay, so, so it's a bit of guess and check, la, in a sense. So if it's a. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Now that's a little bit different, okay? So if it's a some certain number, I think it'll be quite hard to get it. Agree? If some certain number, the turning point is very ugly or fraction for that matter. Uh, well, that's why I think that this using GC is not my favorite. You probably waste more time on it than uh, using other ways. So what I liked uh, other ways uh, includes differentiation. So you can differentiate this, and then you make your dy dx to undefined. Okay, because the gradient is infinity. Uh, sorry, 
uh, the gradient is infinity. So you make your dy dx the denominator to be zero. So for x, you get x equal to three. That will work. Thank you. The other way, I, my favorite. Okay, I'm going to show you. Um, let me just copy and paste this diagram here. Okay, so so that we have uh, more space to talk about the hack. All right. Now, this hack looks a bit like this. First of all, can you recognize that this is like a quadratic? It's not a quadratic because it's not x squared. All right, but it's like a quadratic, yeah? Okay. So, but it's not, it's not a quadratic one. Yeah, but if you tilt your head a little bit like this, and you start to see that it's actually a quadratic. Agree? Huh? So, the hack, the hack is this, okay? If you ever think about this, let x be the y, and let the y be the x. Then, you should start suddenly recognize this quite well. To say that, A, hey, wait, hold on, this looks very familiar. When you were in sec 3, you learned complete the square. Okay, and complete the square does one thing very effectively, and that is uh, you can find the turning point. So in other words, if you change the x to y and y to x, you almost immediately know how to sketch this, right? Because it ends at minus 5 at 3, and there you go. This is your happy face. This is, this is the point, this is your y, this is your x. Yeah, that's it, happy face. Now, of course, you said, wait, 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 hold on, Ms. Nang. Uh, now I'm very confused. Because the x is not x, the y is not y, right? Okay, cool. You know what? This point is called minus 5, 3. If you have it x, y like that. The original must be y, x. Take a look at this graph. Can you, visual, can you relate to this? Can you see that, have a sense that they are the same? Just imagine for a moment that this one can pop out, flip around. All right, we literally flip around, huh? so that the x become the y, the y become the x. Okay, literally. If I wish I had the kind of animation, right? put your three D glasses on, and then well, I can see that. Now then, you will look like this. Okay, so in short, x is three. Uh, wrong color. And you know what's the best thing about this? I don't think you get marks for doing this. So you can all the heck you want. Three, four, seven. Not many marks. It's only a four mark question, very stingy, okay? Now, the 3, 4, 7 is mighty important because it allows you to form the integral properly and then you can use your GC. All right, the blue part is done, so by having the blue part, you probably get one mark. All right, next thing is the red part and then the green part. All right, when you talk about the green part and the red part, this is what you want to pay attention to, and that is uh, the idea that we already discussed when we are talking about the GC, and that is whenever you make y the subject in this kind of a scenario whereby there's a x squared or a y squared, Okay, you should know by now, right? X squared or Y squared is perfectly symmetrical. Okay? So when it's perfectly symmetrical, and when you try to make one of them the subject with a plus minus, you should understand that uh, when this is a plus, it is referring to the top. Okay? When it is a minus, it refers to the bottom. Some curves, some curves, much easier. It's not top bottom. It's left right. So when you make your x the subject, you're gonna have plus minus root y. Same. Positive will be on the left. Uh, sorry, on the right. Negative will be on the left. That's something that you probably just want to memorize. Okay. Positive is on the positive side. Negative is on the negative side. So if it's less and left and right. That's how we divide. If it's up and down, that's how we divide. And if it's a circle. That's also how you divide. Circle also go up and down, left and right. So it depends on whether you want to make x a subject or y the subject. Ellipse also the same. As long as you have x squared or a y squared or it's a perfectly symmetrical one, all right, there's always this plus minus problem, right, when you make one the other subject. So uh, just bear in mind that you must choose the right one. Because the red one, the red one, the equation must be the negative version. And if you choose the wrong version, you're going to get the wrong answer, obviously. So the red one is the one with the negative root. The green one is the one with the positive root. Cool? Now that you understand that, you are ready to get the answer. Oh, welcome to the seven. Never move along. Eh? Okay, hold on. All right, so uh, the red volume is going to be pi integrate from 3 to 4. All right, 3 to 4. The red one, please. Minus 5 minus square root of this square dx plus, okay, and then minus the green one, which is from 3 to 7, 
minus 5 plus square root of this square dx. 1, 1, 1. Each one, one mark. Final answer, one more mark. Okay? Make sense? Four mark only what? So it can't be, you know. Yeah. So which means that all this effort of finding the 3, 4, 7, 0 mark. Okay? So, but anyway, this is AJ. All right? In the actual exam, this is probably five mark minimum, all right? Okay? So finding all this does give you some mark. So it's just using GC because the question never said exact, which is thank goodness, because exact is going to be very, very annoying to do, and probably even quite hard because the integration of this is not simple. Mm -hmm. uh, not say not important, I mean, it's just troublesome lah, because you see all the limits are all different numbers anyway, so you can, cannot really simplify. So don't bother about the exact, just use GC. Okay, but I guess what is more important, uh, what is useful uh, in, the, in the past few minutes where we discussed this, a few things, okay? Number one is the visualization, all right? Uh, the chopping of the symmetrical curve into two parts, two halves, positive, negative, learn to recognize which one is which. I think that's important that we have it in our mind uh, at this moment. Okay, uh, and of course the other one is the hack. All right, it can't be that you can draw happy surface, you cannot draw C shape, right? Yep. So you just sometimes have to have a little bit of a courage in yourself to, you know, what if I change the x to y, y to x, I can draw it a lot easier, right? And then I change it back later. Okay, and then that allows you to figure out all the details that you can otherwise figure out quite quickly. Good idea. So a few things I think is useful. Good news first. A level never come out such question. Okay, such question, what I mean by such question is that the volume is actually bounded by two curves of the same equation. Now, let me explain to you. You cannot think that this is impossible, you know, like, is so hard. I can simply give you a simple question. Uh. Simple, not? This curve is simple, right? Nobody can complain, it's hard. Simple, right? What if I want this to be rotated about y-axis? Rotate y-axis, uh, not x-axis. X-axis is boring, okay? X-axis is boring, huh? Eh? Y-axis, same problem. You need to make x the subject. You see that? The moment you need to make x the subject, you have plus minus. And then you need to know, oh, you know what? I need to chop into half, which half, which half, which one, minus which. That's all. It's not that it's super hard. It's just that it's underexposed. That's all. Okay, cool. All right, so, so I can give you a, a simpler version, but it's the same concept. All right, so of course this is not the simpler version because this one does come with a line and as well as a tunnel and okay, fair enough. It, it does make people get a little bit more tense. Any questions? 